this section, this lecture is about stress and 3.1 is about stress state in one point, point P in the graphics below. Per definition, there's a stress vector and there's a stress tensor and they are related to the force and the area of a cut A, also sketched in the graphics. Now, why do we need a stress tensor instead of a vector? Why is the force not just enough? What is the force acting on point P? Now, the object here, this potato-like object, uh, the arrows indicate that forces are acting on this object from this side, compressive, from this side, compressive, from this side, tensile. Okay, the dashed line in the background, that is the coordinate system, one axis, two axis, three axis. The gray area is a cut through the object, and the cut has an area A, and the point P is where we are looking at. Now, when you take away the left half, you have only the right half, and we can look, we really can see the area. In point P, there are a vector P and three decomposed subvectors P1, P2, and P3. I will explain. And we have a normal vector which describes the cut. It's the vector perpendicular, it's a unit vector perpendicular to the cut area. Okay, so with all these three components, the vector P is the stress vector, and that is defined as the limit of area of the cut going to zero. So zooming in closer and closer to the point, and the force divided by the area. So a stress is defined as force divided by area, and the delta is going to zero when the area goes to zero. So the force will become smaller, the area will become smaller, and what we get in the limit is a a value of stress which is acting on that area in point P, small area around point P. And as you see, it is acting not in the normal, it's not acting inside the plane, it's acting in some arbitrary direction. It can act in any arbitrary direction. Okay, however, the stress vector P can be decomposed into a normal component, P1, which is pointing in the one direction, it can be decomposed into P2, which is parallel to the two direction of the coordinate system, and direction three, which is parallel to the three direction of the coordinate system. So this is how we have a vector decomposed into three components. And likewise, later I will show you how to decompose it in the normal and the tangential directions. Some remarks and summary, a stress vector P has in general an arbitrary orientation. The magnitude and direction of P is depending on the location of the point and the orientation of the area. The stress state in a point is only fully known when P is known with respect to not only this one area, but every arbitrary area. And in three dimensions, that means we need to have three independent cuts in order to get all this information, at least three independent cuts. A stress vector P can be decomposed in a normal and a tangential component with respect to the orientation of the area. And the stress vector P can also be decomposed along a Cartesian coordinate system. As I showed on the previous slide, the vector is having components in the three directions of the coordinate system. Now, the three Cartesian stress components, they are obtained when we put the coordinate system such that the normal is parallel to the one axis. And P11 is the normal stress component on this plane in point P. P21 in, in brackets and P31 in brackets, the one in brackets indicates it belongs to the area which has a normal in one direction. The index subscript one, two, and three, they mean the different components of the stress vector P, which we have here. 
So the stress vector P has no subscript. It only has an indication to which area it belongs. And the components have the subscript on top of that. OK, so these are the three components of the stress vector on area A with normal in parallel to the one direction. If you do a different cut in the two direction, then you will get three different, in general, you will get three different stress components. And if you do a cut in the three direction, you will get another three of those components. And this makes nine altogether. So in three dimensions, we have three perpendicular cut possibilities. We have chosen them in the coordinate system directions, normal. And you can have three force components and force divided by the area gives you three stress vector components at the end. So we have nine values which are now quantifying the stress. Now, in order to quantify graphically also the stress and to have a sketch, we can plot these components on a cube. The cube is also assumed to get smaller and smaller. The three outside phases of the cube, which we can see, the back phases we cannot see, the three out phases we can see correspond to the three cut directions. And how do we now draw these vectors? First area is in parallel to the one direction, so that is the first index, the first subscript of sigma one. And the second direction is the direction of the force vector component. And and the stress vector component on that area. So one is the area, the second index is the component of the stress vector. One on this area, three stress vector component. One, two stress vector component. Okay, so these are the three components of the stress vector which we assign to area one. Area one means the area with normal unit normal in the one direction. And then we do the same for the two direction. Two, two is the normal stress component and two, three and two, one are the tangential or shear stress components. And then we do the same in the three direction. Normal stress component, shear stress component. Okay, and we can put this in a stress matrix where we put the normal stress components on the diagonal and the shear stress components on the non-diagonal. In some books and in some literature, you will use instead of one, two, three, you will use X, Y, Z. I will, in the lecture and in the material, exchange these two nomenclatures from time to time. In some older books, the normal stress components are designated as sigma X, sigma Y, sigma Z, and the shear stress components are tau X, Y, tau x z, tau y z. Okay, so this is how you build a stress tensor. What the stress tensor really means, how to work with it, what are its properties, that I will show in the next lecture.